Naam karibu tena mtazamaji unazidi kutazama taarifa za mbio ya KTNC kweli iko ya tarehe 21 mwezi Juni mwaka 2018 na, na, na anza na hii taarifa tena ambapo shirika la posta nchini Kenya limezindua magari 20 na mawili yatakayosaidia katika shughuli za shirika hilo akizungumza katika hafla ya uzinduzi katibu katika Wizara ya Mawasiliano Jerome Ochieng amesema magari hayo yatasaidia pakubwa katika kuimarisha huduma katika shirika hilo magari hayo yatazinduliwa kwa awamu mbili ya kwanza itakuwa magari kumi aina ya Volkswagen Polo Vivo na yalionunuliwa kwa milioni 16.2 awamu ya pili itakuwa hapo kesho ambapo magari 11 aina ya Isuzu D-Max TRF 86 ya shilingi milioni 36 yatazinduliwa Okay, this is going to cost. Thank you, direct to Mombasa. Last but not least, Rift Valley. Take a, to leverage on that, that we can go to the extent of either delivering to the people or actually inviting you to minimum or I mean maximum 10 kilometers to, 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 to collect your goods. So I'm saying that is one advantage we have as postal corporation because of our presence. So unlike the other uh, e-commerce e uh, services that are available, we are more present and actually we are saying we are going that extra mile of even going to that point of whereby we're able to deliver the services to your doorsteps. The corporation of Kenya's dream is not just to to take the the, the the local role but we also want to be the, the hub the east african the hub not just for east africa but for africa such that uh, anything coming from all over the world say from amazon from ebay from you name it from china from alibaba all of all of those things should be aggregated as a, in a hub in kenya to be distributed to the rest of the countries so we need to serve the people we need to be the link on e with world e-commerce trade both locally and internationally na mwanamke mmoja mwenye umri wa miaka 28 amewashangaza wengi kwa kuwapa sumu wanawe watatu na kisha kujaribu kuwanyonga mmoja baada mwingine kabla kujitumbukiza katika mto na kujitoa uhai kisa hicho kimetokea katika kijiji cha Sumek katika kaunti ya Nakuru mtoto mmoja mwenye umri wa miaka mitatu aliaga dunia kuwa wili wakinusurika baada ya kupokea matibabu katika kliniki moja katika eneo hilo tuungane na Elfa Slagat mtazamaji ambaye ana maelezo zaidi Ndio ndio alianza hiyo maneno. Huyu mama ameanza alianza hapo hawale kutoka kufanya usharati hapa kwetu. Na tukafumulia tukafumulia juzi juzi mume wake akakuwa amejua. Chusi alieleswa na nikamueleza. Ndio alipata kufahamu kujua mambo hayo. Ndio akaongea na ye, akauliza yeye mbona umenitendea hivi? unge nitendea hivi ungeenda kwenu muende kwenu tuachana na wewe enda kuliko uniaibisha huyo akasema sitaenda lafta uniue na watoto na kutaka kwenda na vile kutaka kwenda atu kujua ako na waso ya ku, kuua watoto na kujiua hata ye mwenyewe mm, ndio jana hata nilikuwa nalala tu nyumba hii Chana nikaitwa kama kama ametenda kitendo hicho. Nilitwa nilikuja kuitwa na Chirani na Richard kumbe wamepiga nduru sana si kusikia sababu ya asili. Kufika huko nikaambiwa ama waliniambia ameua ameua mtoto, ameua shadi tayari. Na angeua yule mwingine. Alipea alikoroka dawa akapea hawa dawa ikakosa kuwa hawa mara moja wakati aliona hawa wajaaga yule mwingine sijui aliaga yule mwingine akataka kunyonga huyu mwingine huyu msichana sasa ndiyo alituokoa sababu alipiga nduru alipiga nduru sana ndiyo baba yake akasikia baba yake sasa akauliza ni nini huyu mama sasa akatoroka kutoroka kumbe mtoto amekufa ame, alikorokea dawa na chakula mkate na kuinja sijui na dawa ya na yapanya hiyo ndiyo ikatushangasha na akatoroka kutoroka tukapeleka hao watoto hao watoto wakasema tulipewa dawa na tumetafika tafika tukapeleka hospitali hapo private private ya osea mtu mwingine daktari mwingine huwa na aliandika hospitali yake amua sasa huyu akatibu hao 
na wakarudi yule mwingine tukaitana tukaita chief tukapigia simu chief naye akapigia askari yake ndio tukakuja wao wakakuja kuchukua mwili wakakuwa huko baba yake ndiye akachukua mwili baka huko asubuhi ndio tulistukia huyu alienda akachitukumbukisha kwa machi huko huko rigogo mm. na kwa sasa hivyo ndo hali ilivyo eh ndio hali ilivyo ni mama wa richard mimi ni mama wa richard mm. Mm. hayo pengine sasa ni mama uh, mama wa richard ambaye ni mume wa aliyefanya kitendo hichi ambayo kimeweza kushangaza wengi akitueleza nini haswa ileza kufanyika hapa ni mambo ambayo wengi kati ya wakaji hadi wa sasa hawajaweza kuamini uh, licha ya kwamba hapo awali Uh, ali, mwenda zake huyo wa umri umri wa miaka 28 aliweza kufanya na mume wake ambao kwa sasa tumeeleza kwamba hapo awali walikuwa na mzozo ni jambo ambalo limeuzunisha hapa wengi na kwa sasa uh, mipango pengine ya kuweza kuwarai hawa watoto inaendelea hapa katika kijiji cha Sumek ni hayo kwa sasa kwako studioni Asante sana Elfas Lagat kutoka kaunti ya Nakuru kwingineko huko Isiolo mwanamke mmoja ambaye mewe anadaiwa kuwawa na polisi katika mazingira ya kutatanisha katika eneo la Milimani kaunti hiyo ya Isiolo sasa anaitaka serikali na hususan rais Uhuru Kenyatta kumsaidia kidai kuwa mamlaka ya kusimamia shughuli za polisi Aipoa imekataa kumsaidia kupata haki Bi Judith Kathambi theori anasema mume wake David Muriogi Kathurima aliwawa kwa kupigwa risasi na polisi mwezi Aprili mwaka 2015 alikuwa akifanya kazi kama mlinzi katika kanisa moja eneo hilo. Huku isolo tulikuwa tukipoteza watu wengi kupitia mauaji ya askari na mume wangu alikuwa mmoja na mume wangu alikuwa mtu innocent na alikuwa na mambo mengi na alikuwa akitoka kusikiza kelele na alipo gusa mlango kufungua ndipo alishutiwa na wakati haya maneno nilifuatilia yani alifanywa postmortem hospitali ya Kirua na hapo ipo alikuja wakafanya uchunguzi na wakati walipofanya uchunguzi walisema tukoje serikali haina pesa as from 2015 mpaka wa leo Awacha wetu alipoti ene na hata namba ya simu walibadilisha. So nataka kujua ni nini aswa kinafanyika kwa serikali ya uchunguzi sababu nataka kujua chenye kisababisha kifo cha mzee wa wangu. Wamiliki wawili wa nyumba katika mtaa wa Gakwegori mjini Embu wamekamatwa na polisi kwa kosa la kuakodisha nyumba raia wawili wa Kichina ambao wanasemekana kuhusika katika biashara ya kutengeneza mashine za kucheza kamari wenye nyumba hao wametiwa baroni wakati polisi wakiimarisha operesheni dhidi ya uchezaji kamari haramu No, they told me they have been allowed to do it. By who? Yes, MD. Where is the letter? Where is the letter? Did you demand to go and read the bar? Where is the letter? Where is the letter? Where is the letter? This is not a business premises, India. But today we have a total of 236. The last time we burned 194. And I think so far we have done over 500 in terms of destruction. But one thing that is emerging is we have a lot of assembling done here. Because even part of these ones are being assembled in a, in a house. We, we, we got them in Kakwegori in a flat. Somebody does the assembling and selling them out. So it, it's true that this place is being used as, as an assembling place. Then they are later sold to other places of this county and beyond. But we have uh, vowed that we will eradicate this vice completely from this county. 
na kiongozi wa upinzani Raila Odinga ameongoza tena wabunge wa chama cha ODM kutembelea jamaa marafiki wa seneta wa Migori Ben Oluoch ambaye aliaga dunia mapema wiki hii nyuma ni kwake katika maeneo ya Mlolongo akizungumza baada ya kufariji familia ya mwenda zake Raila amezungumza vita vinavyoendelea dhidi ya ufisadi nchini akisema mengi yamezungumzwa na kilichobaki sasa ni kufungulia mashtaka waliohusika Seneta wa Sea James Orengo amesema ingawa marehemu Oluoch alikuwa nao bungeni kwa kipindi kifupi aliweza kutoa mchango mkubwa familia ya seneta huyu imesema ina mpango wa kufanya mazishi tarehe 9 mwezi ujao And even those of us who came to the hospital met her This is just one of those things that happen but life has continued. These children who have remained are going to represent Ben. And he said that a lot has been said about corruption. What remains is just now to deal with it. Uh, and deal with it head on. So that we can be able to slay this dragon. So we glorify theft. Huh? So you have given them a special institution to investigate them at the Anti-Corruption Commission. But the, just the CID investigated them, arrest them, take them to court, and take them to committee. You want proper investigations and timely prosecution of those who are guilty of corruption. In terms of uh, what I feel Ben would have said, just like me, you would have condemned the sugar imports. I also condemn the sugar imports because they are terrorizing our people down there. Because of that complexity, that's why we are putting a speculative date that we might want it to be done on a Monday of the 9th, but we are still flexible. When those details have been done, official date will be announced, and we'll want to give Ben a decent burial. Na shirikisho la waajiri nchini leo limezindua tuzo kwa mwajiri bora wa mwaka afisa mkuu mtendaji wa kampuni ya Standard inayomiliki Runinga KTN Orlando Liumu ndiye alikuwa mgeni wa heshima katika hafla uzinduzi wa tuzo hilo bana Liumu amewahimiza waajiri kuimarisha mazingira ya utendaji kazi kwa wafanyikazi Best employers promote these values Let's start with the workplace How many of you would want to go to an office which is dusty, which is unkempt, which is untidy? Maybe by a show of hands, how many would be happy? Now, since all hands are down, it means all of you want to go to a place that is inspiring. You want to wake up, feel happy that you're going to work. And the truth is, you cannot talk about responsible business conduct if your own backyard, if your own space is not appealing to employees. Remember, employees are your first set of, um, should I say, stakeholders. They're the ones who help you promote or create the value. The second element is the environment. Now, a lot of us either manage or work in organizations that the byproduct of what we do tends to be either harmful to the environment or has certain adverse effects on the environment or heavily borrows from the environment for resources. Good employers know that. And the more you take from the environment, in my opinion, the more you have a responsibility to give back to that environment. It's about how we make our profits. It's not about making profits. So I hope that sort of defines what I look at as responsible business conduct. Then how do we link the employers to responsible business conduct? How do we make sure that, or how do we bring it together and say that it's the best employers that promote responsible business conduct? 
Serikali ya kaunti ya Marsabit kwa ushirikiano na washikadau wengine imezindua sherehe za kulitangaza Ziwa Turkana kama kivutio cha utalii kuanzia tarehe 29 hadi 30 mwezi huu wa Juni. Gavana wa kaunti ya Marsabit Mohamed Ali ametaja sherehe hizo kama jukwaa mwafaka la kutangaza kaunti hiyo inayojivunia utamaduni na vivutio vingi vya kitalii. We have represented this country for the last three years as we've heard from the sea Zivo culture and we promise to continue to represent this country to the highest levels in all cultural activities. This year we want to promise you this country at large that we want to take this cultural activity to the highest level. Therefore we want to welcome all partners to support us, to make sure that this event becomes successful, we're going to promote this country also. As an awareness creation effort for Marsabit Lekturkana Cultural Festival and Half Marathon 2018, I am honored indeed that Marsabit County is hosting the 11th edition of the Marsabit Lekturkana Cultural Festival to celebrate the multifaceted diversity that makes Marsabit. You see, we have arrived at a singular moment in the history of humanity where many people hesitate to acknowledge the very idea of cultural and linguistic diversity or are only prepared to celebrate it as a treasure from the past, disconnected from present realities, and irrelevant to issues of environmental protection and sustainable development. But we in Marsabit believe that the brave do not abandon their culture. Shirika la Google Kenya kwa ushirikiano na serikali ya kaunti Mombasa wameanzisha mpango wa kuwanufaisha vijana kupata ajira kutumia mitandao ya kijamii. Zaidi ya vijana 200 wameanza kupata mafunzo yani vipi wanaweza kutumia mitandao kujinufaisha si Kenya tu bali kimataifa. Francis Mtalaki alikutana na mkurugenzi wa kampuni ya Google Kenya na kutuandalia mahojiano yafuatayo. Who, uh, launch digital skills for Africa. Na Digital Skills for Africa ni initiative ambayo tulianza mwaka wa 2016 ambapo tulisema ya kwamba tutawatunza watu milioni maja kwa Afrika ili wawe uh, na skills uh, kutumia um, internet. Kwa sababu tu, tulifanya research kuona ya kwamba mtu ambaye amejifunza mambo ya internet anaweza kuwa anajua kazi nyingi hata zingine ambazo haziko hapa. Kama vile unaona um, Ministry ya ICT wameanza Ajira. Ajira initiative hiyo ni ya kufanya kazi ambazo ziko um, u, u, popote ule, ulimwenguni ili waweze kuwa na kutumia hiyo skills hizo kufanya hizo kazi kutoka hapa. And you put that business online. You can be able to reach people in Kisumu, in Nairobi, in Nyeri, Nakuru and sell your goods, right? your t-shirts, your lessons, anything that you're selling to people, transport them without ever having to step foot in any of those um, towns. Right? That is the power of the internet and it makes the world so much smaller. And I would say even further than that, you can even sell abroad. There's so many things that Kenyans are buying from the internet, from sites which are in the UK, in the US, etc. So why can't we turn that around so that Kenyan goods and services are being offered to people outside this country. Tutaendelea kufanya hiyo across the country ku, ku, hakam, uh, to, to, to make sure that to hakikisha uh, ya kwamba watu wote wanajua hii digital skills ipo, iko kwa different languages, 
na watu wanaweza ku, ku, kuisoma kwa sababu ikiwa ujui huwezi hata jaribu kufanya Asante sana kwa muda wako. Asante. Ndam, shukrani sana mtazamaji. Ni kuhusiana na masuala ya siku za hivi karibuni ambapo unaona kwamba unaweza kutumia mitandao ya kijamii kuweza kujinufaisha na kupata senti moja au nyingine. Na mfano mzuri ameweza kutoa ni kutumia mitandao ya kijamii iwe ni kwa kuweza kuuza bidhaa zako kama nguo, leso na masuala kama yale ambayo hata viatu tu kama mkenya wa kawaida wapo wengi tu ambao wanaweza kununua bidhaa hizi. Kwa kwa mkenya wa kawaida kwa kijana hapo ndio kazi. Mimi ni Francis Mtelaki. Na hii ni KT News. Asante mtalaki kutoka kaunti ya Mombasa. Makundi ya vijana na wanawake kutoka kaunti ya Embu yamefaidika kwa shilingi milioni arobaini kutoka kwa kapu la fedha za uwezo. Waziri wa masola ya vijana na jinsia Margaret Kobi ametoa hakikisho kwamba fedha hizo zitoa faidi sana wanawake na vijana pamoja na kubadilisha maisha yao. Akizungumza wakati wa kutoa fedha hizo katika kituo cha mafunzo ya serikali kaunti ya Embu, Bikobia ameataka makundi husika kutumia fursa hiyo kufaidika kutokana na fedha hizo ambazo anasema zimesaidia pakubwa kwa inua vijana na kwa kuzalisha kazi. Tunaauli sana sana kwa nini vijana wapati kazi. Watu wanaenda hata university, alafu wanarudi nyumbani na sema hawana kazi. Na mtu akiwa hana kazi, hiyo maisha ni ngumu. Ni ngumu sana kwa sababu hata mzazi hawezi kuendelea kupeana pesa mtu ameenda hata university na kidudu nyumbani anatarajia kupewa pesa tena. Tukaona dawa ya hiyo ni vijana warundie what you call technical and vocational education training. Because the minute you empower a woman or you empower a youth, it is even impacting very positively in management of crime because crime imerudi chini katika county ya Embu. Tuwache sasa hile hile kati ya kuomba serekali pole pole, diyo tuweze kujisimamia. Na serikali kuu huenda ikalazimika kutafuta ardhi mbadala katika kaunti ya Kisi ili jenge uwanja wa ndege ambao utawezesha ndege kubwa kutua katika uwanja wa ndege wa Suneka. Hii ni baada ya hali ya mteremko katika uwanja huo kuinyima halmashauri ya viwanja vya ndege na nafasi ya kupanua uwanja huo. Akijibu maswali kwa ya wenyeji wa kaunti ya Kisi kuhusu hatua ambazo zimechukuliwa katika uwanja huo kamishna wa kaunti ya Kisi bwana Godfrey Gigo, eh, Kigoshi ametetea serikali kuu kwa kusema kwamba inaendelea na shughuli za kukarabati uwanja huo ili ndege ndogo zianze eh, kutua huko tena baada ya uwanja huo kuwa bila kazi kwa miaka mitatu sasa All over the country there are so many airstrips and the national government has done a lot on these airstrips in some areas, they have even uh, expanded them. In fact, even uh, the neighboring uh, Homer Bay airstrip. There is work that is ongoing here. And I remember I've attended two meetings with the Kenya Airport Authority. One of that meeting, the, uh, the managing director came. The government had intention of expanding that airstrip, additional three kilometers. But we had a challenge with Suneka airstrip. Because ukiangalia vile inakaa, the terrain, ya kwamba inaenda, kienda muisho pande hii, inaenda ina, inarudi chini, na pande hile hini inarudi chini. Harafu wakasema ya kwamba, it will be too expensive, unless they, maybe they look for an alternative land somewhere within the county, diyo waweze kuona vile tunaweza kuwa, na mahali wanaweza jenga air strip, ambois, which is going to accommodate uh, more, bigger aircraft. So I want to say that there is some work that is ongoing, to accommodate zile ndege dogo katika suneka airstrip as the Kenya Airport Authority look of alternative land mahali ambapo wanaweza accommodate more bigger aircraft. Na dhuluma dhidi ya wakongwe katika jamii zinasalia kutoripotiwa katika maeneo mengi ya taifa. Katibu katika wizara ya leba Susan Moshashe amesema kuwa serikali kui meweka mpango wa kuwa kikishe usalama wa wakongwe katika jamii. Hakizungumza katika hafla ya kuadimisha siku ya kuwahamasisha wakongwe kuhusiana na dhuluma wanazozipata katika jamii. Moshashe alisema wanaolinda haki za wakongwe wa hakikishia haki hizo zimezingatiwa vile vile ametaja nia ya wizara yake kuwahamasisha wakongwe wote katika kila kaunti kuhusiana na haki zao na masuala na ukumba jamii aa 
the ministry values older persons and has put programs and policies in place to ensure that older persons age gracefully in a peaceful environment where their participation will contribute towards national development. Ambassador <laughs> Siku ya leo naondoka ila na uwanja